Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. My name's Penny and I live in Central Illinois and I'm a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster. Thanks for joining my knitting journal today. I can't tell you how, how much fun I'm having right now with the podcast. And um, if you're a podcaster, um, it is so much fun when you see that somebody subscribed um, uh, to your to your podcast and I thank you and welcome you new viewers and old viewers as well thank you so much for tuning in it just is so much fun to see those and brightens my day when I see that you know it's exciting to go from you know close friends to um, building a community so thank you thank you so much and welcome I hope you're all having a good knitting day here it is uh, Friday um, August 19th in central Illinois and it is 82 degrees and sunny outside and if you can't tell by what's going on here um, we've had some marvelous weather this week the air conditioning is off I love having my windows opening opened and um, hearing and seeing the sights of what's going on outside and a nice breeze blowing in and, and it's not bad for the uh, um, what we call the Silco Bill here in Central Illinois um, I'm pleased that we that, that we can have a break from AC and heat. So we've got a little transition weather going on and um, uh, it can change in a New York minute here in central Illinois. It, we can have 95 and hot and humid in uh, mid-September. So, you know, where we're not totally giving up on summer and summer's not over with, I am enjoying every, every piece of this weather that I can. So before we head into the regular uh, stuff here at the podcast, I just want to give you all a heads up. I am putting a pause on the Zooms for right now. There are so many Zooms out and about um, to take advantage of, and um, I just felt like maybe it's, it, maybe we should give mine a little break, and you can take advantage of others. It doesn't mean we're giving up on it totally, but um, for right now, we're just going to put a pause on it. And I thank you all that have tuned in and joined the Zoom um, the past uh, couple of months. I do appreciate it. It was nice meeting you. Let's stay in touch. Let's don't let that whole community stop and go away. But um, there's lots of other ones for you to take advantage of right now. So anyway, with the change in weather again here, um, these um, are the last sweaters, summer sweaters, that I'm going to talk about on the podcast this year. Uh, mainly because for me, um, I probably should have started a couple of weeks ago with my transitional sweaters. Just transitional sweaters, you know, they're kind of, we're going to talk about those more in the uh, next episode, but transitional sweaters here, you know, um, you know, you can wear those well into winter when you start doing them. Um, and it's nice to have some three quarter sleeves and we'll talk about those, um, in the future episode. But for this this purpose, um, I'm going to really finish up on my summer sweaters. I have done, I'm done with my summer sweater knitting. There is no more summer sweater knitting for this year. And I'm still going to be wearing my summer sweaters um, because as we transition into fall, you can still wear them and throw a sweater over them. And by noon, one o'clock, you're taking the uh, cardigan off because it's warmed up a little bit and you're out in the sunshine or whatever. So I'm going to share just a um, one um, that I've knit before and one that I've just finished and hopefully I'm I'm hoping over the course of the summer you've gotten some ideas of sweaters to knit for yourself next year or you're knitting them now or if you go away in um, the winter to Florida um, I, I hope that I've given you some ideas of things that you can knit for um, in the southern states for the uh, winter time when you go down on your um, your uh, winter season so Let's start with, first of all, I'm going to start with Sugar Maple. This particular one I is by Karina Spencer. Um, I tried it on a couple of years back on a sweater workshop that Corey from IROC Knits did. And I liked it then, but I couldn't come up with the perfect yarn for it. Um, until my uh, local yarn shop, the Fiber Universe in Peoria, um, Erin knit it out of Haiku Concentric Cotton. And she had a couple of varieties um, to choose from in that. And so I decided to do one as well in the pinks. And I was having that phase where I wanted, to, I thought maybe I need to switch up what colorway I was doing. And so I chose the pinks. Now, this particular yarn gradiates like this. It is multi-stranded. So it, when you do the pink, it's like four or five 
um, strands of this. So you really have to watch when you're knitting with it that you don't um, drop a, 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 a strand because then you have to go back and fix it or, or do something with it. So it does it naturally gradiates like this. I didn't make any changes other than to when I got to the sleeve, I knew that I wanted to end in the gray, so I clipped and then I went back to the gray so that I could have gray sleeves. All of my mods are on my Ravelry page, uh, my Ravelry, um, yeah, my Ravelry project pages, and I'm Penny J there, P-E-N-N-Y-J um, is my, um, on my project pages. So um, I love this yarn. I love the, I love the design. And as you can tell from the pattern, I have lengthened, lengthened the sleeves. And again, I've done some mods to make it fit my body. And I wanted to share this particular picture that gives you some ideas that I just keep with the pattern um, to show when I podcast because this has options that you can make the sleeve and the length and the yarn anything you want to do. And here's Corey with um, some other knitters that have knit different designs. And I'm going to try it and stand up for you just real quick. So you get an idea of what we got here. It's off-centered as shown and here's the look okay the hip and and I just want to shout out to something the pants and jeans and capris and everything that I'm I'm wearing a lot of these days are from QVC they're Kim Gravel Bell pants and they have a flat front no zipper and I love these for my sweaters because one of my biggest eh, issues when I would take pictures of me in my sweaters is that you could see my zipper and I felt like my 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 eyeballs <laughs> my Penny J eyeballs were zoning in on that that thing that stuck out and I'm like I want you to see the whole thing not just that belly and the zip thing so um there I love these flat front pants so I am I, you know years ago I was so torqued off when they stopped Lee stopped making my 100% cotton you know, with the zipper and all that, I wore those to death. And I was so mad when I couldn't get those anymore and had to go to, you know, like, I don't want spandex in my pants. And like, oh, well, you know, some years later, <laughs> that's all I want. So um, I just wanted to share that little fashion tip from Penny J. Um, you know, <laughs> take it or leave it. Anyway, so. And then my last summer sweater that I am finished with, that I am finished knitting, um, is the Edie by Isabel Kramer and again I've made some mods to this as you can see I have lengthened the sleeves their mods are on my Ravelry page and this was done out of Euro Yarns Belvisio I bought um, last early last spring from my local yarn shop and um, lengthened the sleeves did a few mods to it um, this is a finger weight yarn and the pattern is a finger weight and I use less than a thousand yards so I thought that was pretty economical for, um, for my knitting. Now, in hindsight, when I think about it, maybe I didn't choose the best yarn to show off the pattern because it has these textured stitches in it. And I don't think unless you're really on it that you can really see it, but I was in for it and so I just finished it up. Has a short rose, so it has a little scooped um, hem um, at the side, um, V-neck, which I really love, and then um, a bit of a um, raglan. Um, I picked up extra stitches underneath my sleeve, which I always do on here. I always seem to have um, more of a gap um, on my sleeves, and so I pick up extra stitches underneath the arm and incorporate them into my sleeve because, as I said before, um, it's something that I, <clears throat> excuse me, it is something that I need for the uh, largeness of my arm. So, Anyway, that is the end of summer sweaters, at least for the knitting right now, not for the wearing, as I've, as I've said before. So in future episode, we're going to talk about transitional sweaters and winter sweaters, etc. But I just want to share one, a couple of things on that note. I have made a list in my journal and I have to do this. If I don't, if I, you know, and I know that this isn't for everybody, um, but if I don't make a plan for my knitting, and I don't chastise myself if I don't finish this by any means. This is just a rough plan of my knitting. So that I have kind of sort of a focus as to where I'm going. If I don't have a focus for my knitting, 
it's like, oh, squirrel, there's, oh, let's do that, oh, let's buy that yarn. And if I don't have a focus, I'm way out of control, and my stash upstairs would verify that <laughs> with you you all if you could see it so I went to my journal and I made a little list of transitional sweaters possibilities with patterns that with the exception of one I had a couple of them are whips and if I had stash yarn that I could use to knit this um, sweater or not now the nice thing about transitional sweaters is they're good for fall when it cools down but you can wear these into winter and then turn around and pull them back out for early spring when you need a long sleeve or a three quarter sleeve sweater, right? So I made my list, took some of my cutesy little stickers that I've been collecting and put them into my journal just to get an idea. A couple of them are whips, so I'm super stoked about maybe getting them off the needles as well. And I'll share with those, um, I'll share more of those um, in the future episodes but so just to share one of the transitional sweaters that I want that I that has been in my queue couldn't figure out what I wanted to do I've talked about the linen quill cobalt blue yarn that I bought um, early this year and I bought four skeins enough for um, a sweater and I was to toying with doing um, the daily pullover but I have a v-neck and I thought eh, I'm just gonna stick with um, my what was my first thought of doing one and this is Granito my friend Aneta she knit it and right now with um, in preparation for Hohe's fall knit along all of her patterns are 25% off and I don't know how long that goes now I'm going to join the knit along with this sweater but when I do that again I have no um, I have no I, I'm not going to chastise myself if I don't finish it or if I decide not to cast on until later. But I'm going to do Granito. And I just want to give you a little look-see at the side. It has this pocket and the sleeve. And you cannot see the pattern very well because I did it in black and white. But she shows a little bit of it there. It's amazing. There we go. This is Granito. And by the way, in a few days, down below, everything I talk about will be in the description box. There we go, Granito. And like I said, her patterns are on sale for 25% off. I do not know how long, but I just wanted to share that with you and kind of give you a thought of where my transitional sweaters are going. I also have Yume, but again, we'll talk about that in episode 82. Just to give you a little food for thought for transitional sweaters going forward, so... Okay, triangular shawls. We are still doing hashtag summer of shawls 2022 and this will go through, funny, this goes through um, the end, and which is September 22nd, I do believe. So um, today I'm going to talk about triangular shawls with you. Triangular shawls are a favorite of mine. And, I, you know, there's a couple of reasons why I think they're a favorite of mine. Um, they're good ones to start with. If you are not a shawl knitter and you want to knit a shawl, I think they're good, they're good, they're good ones to start with. Um, they're good, I think, for a beginner. They're a good pattern as well to start with. Um, for a beginner shawl maker or a beginner knitter, I think, because it encompasses, especially if you do one in garter, all in garter, or if you throw a little um, stockinette in there for, for the um, um, beginner knitter, I think it's a good way to start either way, knitting or as your maybe your second project after you've learned how to knit um, or beginning shawl knitters. And there is a lot of um, my first shawl out on Ravelry, Ravelry, some of them are free patterns, and so I encourage you to go out there and um, check them out. A couple that I just want to throw out for you that I don't have the pattern pages, but I'll link to them. First one up is um, a shawl by Denise Bell. It's a free pattern. It uses only 400 yards of finger weight yarn, so a perfect shawl for one of those souvenir finger weight yarns that you've picked out that you don't know what to do. It's called the Confidence Shawl slash Kerchief, free on Ravelry. Ravelry. I have a hard time doing that today for some reason. 
reason. My mouth is working quicker than the brain. <laughs> anyway, um, confidence shawl, and it's a cute, uh, a cute one for beginner knitters. And again, you can stop it when you want to or go on. Another one that I've knit a couple of is the Boneyard by Stephen West, another free pattern that I've knit um, multiple times. It's it's a great one, and and I've used it in different um, weights of yarn as well, um, and and knit it for um, hospice shawls as well. Or just if you want to do a simple little quick shawl um, to give a friend who's going through something, you know, um, a little hug. So those are a couple that I would, um, you know, I would in encourage people to start out with and, and the price is right as well on them. Okay, so ones that I want to show you. First off, this first one is called the Luxury Shawl. And I wore this a lot with an orange turtleneck, a green turtleneck when I was working. And as I've said before, the triangular shawl for me is easy to wear. I wore a lot of them when I was working in the work environment. Um, some dress pants, a turtleneck, and then I threw a, a triangular shawl around my neck or a crescent for that, and I made my outfit um, in the work where I was working. Um, you know, I looked, you know, I thought I looked professional in those. So this is one that I knit for that. I actually knit this one in 2017 after I saw it on um, Melissa and Lisa's Espas Tricot um, podcast when they were doing it. And so I ordered the yarn from them. It is, again, um, it's a pay for pattern. It's by uh, Anna and Heidi Pickles. It's called the Luxury, a uh, Simple Luxury Shawl. Another one, this has two yarns that you put together. This one had an, a new to me kind of um, mohair, kind of a heavier weight mohair, and then a lighter weight Madeline Tosh at the time. So anyway, in the greens. And this one, again, simple. There's no center spine in it. And an, another good one for um, beginner, and you could incorporate any of those um, other ones as well in that. So there we go. Some nice little greens, avocado greens, very fallish um, and, um, and a good size. So like I said, I wore this a lot when I was working in the work. Force. There you go. So next one up that I have, again, this one I, you can knit in um, what other colorways um, you want. Um, you can do it all one color. You can use souvenir yarn. Um, this particular one calls for a DK. This is called Water's Edge by Cabin 4. It's been around for a while. I have adapted this one as well. I've used a heavier yarn and did this for hospice. I used Barocco um, Folio, which is a DK yarn. It's a finger weight pattern, but again, you can up, upgrade it to whatever you want and a reasonable pattern and it's $4. Another one that, um, you know, second or third shawl for a beginner because it encompasses some different techniques um, along with some eyelets. So I've done this out of a couple and I switched over. I had some um, green that I used in it. This. This Barocco folio is very, very soft. And just to did a little short one here. And I like this. That center spine. Um, this, again, is water's edge. And you can adapt this. You don't have to do it necessarily in a fingering weight or DK. You could go heavier and larger and bigger. Um, so, um, loving this one. And soft and comfy to wear, you know around whatever or just tied in a knot um, sometimes I can wear them you can there's multiple ways to wear triangle shawls and people have done that so there is that one the next one and I didn't pull any of the patterns for these going forwards next one up is a Serena shadow shawl this one was made from gift yarn that I received it is by Antonio Shanklin it is a pay for pattern and I use two yarns, a variegate and a solid. Um, they're in sparkly, kind of sparkly yarn. It's twinkle sock and ephemeral waves. But here, this is the shadow. And I loved how this one was done. This was very fun to create this. So this is a, such a cool, cool one, springy, summery into the fall as well. And I've shown it before and it was so much fun to knit and watch the progression in it, you know, and ephemeral waves, you know, and, and very much. But this was 
um, gift yarn, and I, and I loved when I can use up a gift yarn. So here's this one. And then finally, the last of the triangle shawl, shawls that I'm going to show today. This is called First Point of Libra. It's by Laura Ayler. This one I knit way back when I had my foot surgery, which was 2016. Um, I bought a gradient pack. The yarn is all Sun Valley Fibers. I bought a gradient pack probably that summer from um, In Stitches Midwest in the blues and turquoise. And there were other gradients, not great, yeah, it was... Um, gradient pack, but not gradient altogether, separate yarns, okay? And there were some other ones that came along with this. And what happened as I was knitting this shawl is I, I put one in and I thought that it was way too close and you it wasn't stark enough next to the one that was there. So I did something that I often do is I took a picture of it in the shawl a little ways. I hadn't went very far. I took a picture and then with my editing on my phone I edited the picture to make it black and white so when you do that when black and white you get a you get a very clear idea of if you're going to see that yarn next to the other one and so when I did that it was like no absolutely not that one's too close you're never going to see it's going to look like a much bigger chunk and so I took it back out and put another one in so um, Use your edit and on your photos if you're ever in doubt, and then edit and use the black and white. So here's first point of Libra. The other yarn that's used in it is an onyx. It's a black, and so I'm just going to, there you go, get, you can get an idea of what it looks like. So it was big chunks. This was a fun one to knit while I was recuperating in the chair. And... Um, and I know, note to self for next time when you show the shawls, let's don't be right in front of the window because you can, this is good light for me, but you know, it kind of shows through. So we'll kind of go this direction. How's that? There you go. That's better. And then once you're done with that chunk, then it goes off to here. So I thought that was super, super fun. Again, you can see these all on my Ravelry page under Penny J. And so that is the triangular shawls that I, from my, from my uh, um, shawl collection, there will be more. We're going to keep on until September. I'll keep showing you some more shawls um, as we go, you know. And I never stop knitting um, shawls just because summer comes and goes. There will be shawls into the winter, but these are the triangular ones. So, okay, let's talk about half and half triangle wraps. I mean... Just to go back, I am loving mine. I Even the one that I didn't think I was going to like, my alpaca one that's heavy, I used it as a blanket. I used it out on the porch earlier this week when it was cold, you know, to just to wrap around me. It, you know, I am loving them. And, and I can't believe that I'm, I'm becoming that person that loves them so much, you know. Because generally, I don't knit more than one thing at a time, you know. Um, it's one and done. And, but this, I, well, it's going to be obvious. So let me tell you this little story <laughs> that happened. I, as I have talked before, I bought some yarns for a couple of half and half triangles for, intended for a couple of people and, and then decided that wasn't really their aesthetic, okay? It was for some daughter-in-laws, let's just say that. So, so anyway, I thought, well, you know, I, maybe I'll just make them for me and then I'm like you know after I got to looking at them I did not like the colorways that I had chosen so I saw on Pearl Soho that they have a very liberal a very nice return policy and I was I thought you know what I'm just going to send a couple of them back and I'm going to exchange them and after a phone call with my friend Anetta um, you know we kind of talked about it and she, what about this and then I was like on the fence I'm like just going to send these back and get some new ones that I really, really like, okay? Well, as I threw these things, some of them in the return bag, and there was several of them, I'm like, oh, oh. I like those colors with other colors that I have for me. And so I'm keeping them, a couple of them. I'm keeping a couple of the others or have made their way to other places. But anyway, I wanted to share upcoming um, half and half triangles with you. First of all, Kettle Black, 
And if you remember, these were the two that were going to go together, and after I saw them, I just did not care for them as much. And these wound up together, true turquoise, they're next up. Is that not cool? I love this for me. So this is one. Then the next one was two purples, and I saw these two, and I thought, the two purples were just too muddy, I thought, together what I had. Then I threw these out, and it was like vintage celadon and purple smoke. I mean, like really. Another shawl for me. Now, on my new ones, I'm, I've been, uh, and I'll share with those as we progress, um, I have um, went up a needle size. I did, mine was a size 3 before. I went up to a size 4. I did cast on the black one with a size five and added 20 stitches and for me it was way too big and I was worried about the yarn. So what I did is I backed it out to a size four needle and added 20 stitches and I'm going to see where that yarn goes. Should that yarn go a little bit, should I still have a lot left over? Then I think maybe on the next one I'll try a size five and do extra 20 stitches. So I'm kind of playing with my whole half and half um, triangles wrap as to what is the good, the best size for me. I love all of them that I've gotten so far. Um, and I just, I feel like I'm gonna continue that until I get the right one that I like. I totally do like the linen quilt for it. Um, I've made changes on my new black uh, and um, um, true turquoise one that I'm not doing the eye cord on it. I'm doing um, the slip that I, I've done before. I'll share all that with you down the road as, as as they progress. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of half and half triangle wrap talk here as we go into winter and whatever. So just want to say that and, you know, and I'll probably repeat myself on how much I like that and how versatile it is. Went on a knitting adventure and took this one this um, weekend and totally used it a lot for different times. So um, covering up my legs and my feet or whatever. So um, it was a winner and that is why I'm knitting more of these. So anyway. Also want to give you just a heads up, Frivolous and Frugal is doing a half and a half triangles wrap cast on on September 1st. So if you're so inclined, um, join them, join me, and let's, um, let's continue the half and half triangles wrap um, indefinitely. Let's talk about it. So, okay. Mail call. Let's, let's shift all over to mail call. Got some mail in that I want to share with you. I'm so much fun. I love it when the mailman the mailman came today and didn't leave me anything. So, but I haven't ordered anything. So, but anyway, while we were at um, the mini meetup in uh, Hoffman Estates with Fearless and Frugal, um, we got a little sample. I showed you that of um, Chicken Lady Fiber Arts um, sock yarn in the Frivolous and Frugal colorway, and so I ordered some, and I got it last week before I came. It is, again, Chicken Lady, Lady Fiber Arts. Um, Lynn created this colorway specifically for um, them, and so I ordered it and got mine. I'm so excited. And um, you all may be excited down the road for it as well. So just saying, um, looking forward to um, creating some socks with this. You know, I'm, I'm angry. I'm so excited about that. But you know, so that is the yarn. And then I just have to tell you, included in the box was this, this box that came. And this is so reminiscent for me. When I looked at this box, this is so reminiscent of my um, days as, as a um, uh, buyer for a, a, a department store um, that was here. When I, we would go to New York, and that was the only time you could get Godiva chocolates. And so we'd go downtown and I buy Godiva chocolates. And so this is so reminiscent of that box, box Lynn. So in it, she included a sampler box of her yarn, and this just gets better and better. Reminds me so much. She gave a little um, colorway of uh, purple, ha hazy purple, in her, her different yarn, so I can try them out and let me know what they were. So I'm excited to fondle these and a little peppermint. Is that super cool? What a super, super cool gift and a really way to fondle and see and to check out her yarn. So very reminiscent of the Godiva days. So she had me at the box, but, and I, her yarn, I'm, I took my sample 
that we received, some of us received in the goodie, goodie bag. And Noel, Noel from Knits and Pieces has created a cute little, she knit hers in, she had the smart idea, she knit hers in a, um, in a little souvenir um, sweater and a little socky. Mine I've, um, I'm putting into my, my um, Cozy Memories blanket. So that's where mine's going to be. So that was one of my um, mail calls that came. And then some time ago, I got another one, but I forgot, I put it aside and forgot to, to share with you all. But I ordered from Myax. They had um, um, a, a few weeks back um, a, a kit um, box that they were doing, and um, it was called Spread Joy. And so for those of you um, who've been around here for a while um, and maybe follow me on Instagram, certainly my niece does um, as well, my mantra has been in the last few months since, um, since May is choose joy because I think we have to choose joy. There are so many things that happen to all of us and uh, if you don't choose joy, it comes crashing down on you. So my uh, mantra has been choose joy and I'm keeping that because I have to actively choose joy to not wallow in um, self-pity and what ifs. So I say to you, choose joy. And when this one came, I thought this was um, perfect for me. This is spread joy. And the intent is maybe to give it away, but I'm keeping this because um, I, I, I need to spread joy within as well as um, choosing joy. So when the Mayak came, it came so cutely wrapped. I thought, so I kept this. I'm like, this is so super adorable. As you can see, packaging, I think, really is just, is, is key. You know, samples in a yarn shop are key. But when the packaging comes and you're like, oh, this is just almost too cute, too cool to open up, I just love it. So look at this. I kept this sticker, and I think I'm going to cut that sticker out now and put it in my journal because I have, to, and, and with the choose slash spread joy. So I got the little box, and I have never, ever used Mayak yarn. And this was a perfect time to... Um, to try it out. And so look at this box. I mean, they had me at the box, right? Isn't that cool? Super, super cool box. Spread joy. Included with some patterns. A pattern. Um, wear it as you like it. And one of the things they have, there's a, there you go however you want to wear it. And I know that Caddy Jax is doing an ascot from um, the Petite Knitter. And so this is perfect, my version of it, I think, a little bit larger. And then look at these yarns. I cannot wait. This is a uh, Mayak Baby Yak Organic Cotton. And again, eth ethically sourced. But look at these. And this is going to be mine. Is that not super cool? And such a super, super cool mail call. Love it. I love it when a, when a mail call comes. And so I've had that for a while and was on the fence as to what to do, you know, give or keep, and I'm keeping it. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's the mail call. Okay. Uh, a couple more things. I just want to talk to about knitting adventure number two for me this summer. Just um, last weekend, went to Indianapolis with some friends. We all met at ZK many years ago and kind of um, formed a little table and a little group. And so um, now, we, now we're creating our own getaways once a year. And this year we decided to go to Indianapolis and do some and spend the weekend. Went over on Thursday, came back on Sunday morning. And it was so much fun to meet back up with them and go out on a knitting adventure. Uh, it was fun. We had a great time. We had great food. We had great knitting. We had great shopping. We had great travels. We had great laughs. Um, we had great a great Airbnb, which tells me, which, which I want to talk to you a little bit about um, knitting adventures or retreats. If you don't have a retreat in your area um, that you want to travel to or you're not comfortable traveling with, a couple of things that you can do is, number one, create your own retreat. If you don't have friends that are nearby that knit, scope out yarn shops in your state or adjacent states and take a day trip and go out and do your own knitting adventure. You know, um, I've said that before. If I don't have someone to go with and it's close enough, 
what the heck, go. I have AAA, so if I have an issue, I have AAA. But, you know, create your own knitting adventures. I think it's very important. And now that we're getting back out to do that. Um, also, if you have knitting friends, why not talk to them and say, hey, would you like to go to such and such city nearby? Let's get an Airbnb and split the cost. Um, and do that. Create your own knitting adventure. I think it is so important for most, for most, some of us to get out and get a, get out and about. This week, I have found that I have just been, after we got back, I'd been gone a couple of places. And this week, I've just been kind of vegging. And then all of a sudden today, it's like, you know, um, I'm ready to, to, I'm ready to go back out and participate in the world again. So I, I, I really um, encourage you all, if you don't have a knitting retreat close that you can go to, create your own. Create it with friends, create it by yourself, uh, but just do it and go out. So anyway, um, the Indianapolis, um, just a couple of, you know, just give you highlights. We visited some yarn shops over there. We went to Mass Avenue in Indianapolis. I had been there before. Um, I bought some yarn I'm going to share with you here shortly. Um, we went to Village Yarn Company in Zionsville and then went to the Black Sheep Yarn and Fiber Arts in Noblesville and then also Always in Stitches in Noblesville. And so um, I have to say my faves weren't necessarily, were not the yarn shops. My faves was downtown Noblesville and downtown Zionsville. Quaint little towns where you can, um, Zionsville was having a farmer's market in their main um, street so you had to walk. A little ways but not far um, on Saturday morning when we went there and it was just nice to be out in the sunshine and just walk this quaint um, little city somewhat they have a hotel down there they have food down there um, the yarn shops down there and um, just a cute little town so I enjoyed that um, the other place was downtown Noblesville again super super quaint lots of cu cute little shops that to go into um, the highlight for me was Noble Coffee. They have, I agree with um, Anetta, um, they have the best hands down caramel macchiato I've ever had. And I had it iced. It was delish. So Noble Coffee and they were um, a small little shop, but a really hopping place. So um, nice walking. I really, really um, enjoyed that most of all. Um, Always in Stitches has a little bit of yarn, but they really have, if you are a quilter or a cross-stitcher, um, the coolest place to visit. So I, I would encourage you to go there. Um, and the other shops I loved as well. Um, um, I <laughs> Thanks to my friend, Annetta, who made me buy this yarn. Um, I bought some yarn at Mass Avenue. I bought a couple of um, gift yarns for some friends that they'll be getting. But then, I i mean, I had to buy this, right? I had to buy this yarn. Um, Bindu and Annetta made me buy this because it was so reasonable. It was $5 a skein, right? $5 a skein, a bag of 10 Okay, a yarn I have never used from their sale room and the color it like I have to do it. I bought this yarn not even knowing, having any idea what I was going to knit with it. It's called Cantata. It's by Cascade. It is a cotton superwash merino. It reminds me, it's very, if I, if I did not already have two turtle doves, I would make a turtle dove out of it. It may be a third turtle dove. Um, but it was in their sale room. I mean, I bought a bag, how could you not, right? So coming home, I didn't have a clue. And I thought, well, worst comes to worst. I, you know, it is, um, it's an Aaron weight. There's 218 yards. So I have a lot of yardage. I have 10, 10, so 2000 yards. Worst comes to worst, I can make hospice blankets out of it if I want to, or I can do a sweater and then finish up with a hospice blanket. So it is, um, like I said, cotton, 70% cotton, 30% superwash merino. I've never, ever seen it. And so this is going to be a possibility. Now, the fun thing about it is there is a pattern <clears throat> that I had my eye on from Espace Trico way back in the day. It's called the Comfort Zone, Comfort Zone by, Mel by Melissa Clulo. 
and it's kind of a cape wrappy type thing. It's a free pattern. Some ideas. So I think it's going to be this. I think this yarn is going to be um, the comfort. Excuse me, the comfort zone. <clears throat> so, you know, that's kind of my my thought process of where where I'm going with that. You know, so that was kind of the the only shopping that I bought and did. Um, we did do. We had goodie bags. Everybody seemed to bring a little fun thing. And if you want to see all the goodies, most of the goodies that um, I got from, that we all got received from our little knitting adventure, you can check me out on PJ Knits um, on Instagram. I also have a blog, www.pjknits.blogspot.com, that I talk about knitting and sometimes a little bit of life stuff, a little bit of weather, a little bit of knitting out on the porch, but um, there was... There was goodies that, that all of us kind of contributed to everybody. So that was so much fun. So that is uh, that. Now, one of the things I want to share with you is books and bags and bringing it back for this episode. And it is in keeping with a couple of things. It is, first of all, keeping on the book, on the book side, um, a book that I, with, the, with triangular shawls. I have shown this before um, last year, but I want to show it to you again for those who have not. Um, watch past episodes or are just joining us. Um, this book is called To the Point, The Knitted Triangle. It is all on shawls. Okay. And it's all triangular shawls. It is by um, Leela Raven. Um, the yarns that are used in this book are Quince & Co. yarns, and I don't have access to Quince & Co. yarn. But I, what I love about this book is a couple of things. They have divided the shawls into sections, sideways shawls, top-down shawls. I love that point so that you can go. This book is available at, in um, a hard copy, but also I saw on Ravelry that you can buy it as an ebook if you're, if you're not inclined to adding to your book library. What I did on these pages for the Quince & Co. yarn, since I don't have access to these, I went on each page, and since it's my book, and I can do that as easy you would say, um, next to the yarn, I put in pencil, but I could have done it in pen. I put in there what is the weight of that yarn and how much total yardage that that particular shawl did. So that I could check out my, um, I used the Ravelry function. I could plug this particular pattern in there, Moonflower, into Ravelry and then pull it up. And um, Ravelry would tell me if I have any um, yarns that are, are suitable for that and will also um, when I click on that um, yarn ideas it will tell me if I have enough in my stash so um, I do I went and did those kinds of things to my book but I just love a lot, a lot of these this is not for your beginner knitter I would not say um, but has a lot of great charts in it a lot of cool patterns that you might want to check out in varying degrees there we go so I just wanted to share this particular book with you um, because it, it does. It, there's bottom up, top down. Um, they talk about increasing, decreasing, sideways border, etc. And so there's a lot of really super cool shawls in here that, um, that I wanted to share with you. This particular book from my library that I have to the point, um, the knitted triangle. So anyway, that is our book. And then as far as bags, I just want to um, show you a bag that I received over in Indianapolis this weekend. And it has um, some mitts in it. But I think this says um, things in general with life these days. It says, getting through the day, one stitch at a time. And um, I love this bag. So this is one of the many um, treasures that I received. And I promptly came home and put my little... Um, mitt in there that I am working on. So anyway, um, we had a wonderful weekend um, and um, uh, it's a wonderful group of ladies that we keep in touch with. Brought together by a knitting retreat that, that we decided, hey, um, we're all um, uh, within a few hours of each other that we could easily um, go somewhere every year um, and Airbnb it and um, definitely have yarn shops to shop with and um, 
and I appreciate them so much. And they put up with, you know, some issues that I, you know, some stomach issues that I occasionally have. And so I, I appreciate their, um, their uh, friendship so much. And my roomie was Debbie. And um, so we had a great fun driving over and rooming together in um, our upstairs room and um, just shopping together, traveling together was fun. So um, Debbie will be on a future episode. Um, I, she's definitely going to be on the 100th episode, but perhaps we could get her here before then, you know, get her out on the porch um, when people aren't cutting grass. Um, I don't know about you, but the kids here in central Illinois went back to school on Wednesday, so it's a, a tad quieter here. Um, there's the there's the feeling of fall out there. I'll I'll say that a tree down the a road has got a, just a couple of red leaves in it, but it always goes red, you know, quick. Early on, so I, I'm not that I'm wishing summer away and bringing on the fall, but I do love you know, like I said, I love having the windows open and uh, just enjoying fall knitting and winter knitting. I have so many ideas of things that I want to do. So anyway. All right, I guess then that is it. I will let you all go um, for now. Again, um, thank you so much for, um, for new subscribers and for my friends and those who have stayed with me and all of that. Um, I do appreciate it. And uh, I hope you're having some fun with your knitting too. So until the next time, knit on with confidence and hope through all crises. And I'm hoping that the crises are minimum for us all. So, uh, knit on. Thanks for joining.